Welcome to this lecture about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. We know from a previous lecture about the basics of matrices that a vector is a matrix with a single row or a single column. For example, the following vector is the so-called column vector because the matrix has only one column. This vector can be represented in a two-dimensional plane like this. We draw a line from the origin to the point in space with an x-coordinate of 3 and a y-coordinate of 3. The elements of this vector can therefore represent the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. The length or the magnitude of this vector can be calculated by Pythagoras' theorem if we imagine a triangle like this. In this case, we know that the sides A and B of this triangle are equal to 3. In this case, we see that the length of the vector is equal to the square root of 18. Vectors also have a direction. We see that the vector points from the origin to the point with an x and y coordinate of 3. Let's consider another vector. This vector can be represented by a line that goes from the origin to the point in space with an x coordinate of 2 and a y coordinate of 4. The length of this vector is the square root of 20, since the length of the two dashed lines of this triangle are 2 and 4. We'll now have a look at the special vector, the so-called eigenvector. An eigenvector v is a non-zero vector that satisfies the following equation. For example, if you multiply a square matrix A by a column vector V and if we get a new vector that is equal to a number times the old vector then vector V is called an eigenvector of matrix A. One can think of this as if you multiply matrix A by vector V the new vector does not change direction after the transformation. Let's test if the following vector is an eigenvector of matrix A. The vector can be represented in space like this. We now multiply matrix A by this vector we see that we have got a new vector. If we draw this new vector in the same plane, we see that the new vector has a different direction. Since this vector changes its direction when multiplied with matrix A, we can conclude that this vector is not an eigenvector of matrix A. Let's see if the following vector is an eigenvector of the same matrix. The difference is that the second element is now equal to 1 instead of 2. If you multiply matrix A by this vector, we get a new vector. If you draw this vector in the plane, we see that the new vector has the same direction as the original vector. Thus, vector V is therefore an eigenvector of matrix A. We'll now have a look at the meaning of the so-called eigenvalue. The eigenvalue tells us how much the eigenvector changes in size when multiplied with the matrix. For example, remember 
that when we multiplied matrix A by the eigenvector, we got a new vector, which is twice as long as the original vector. The associated eigenvalue to the eigenvector is therefore equal to 2. The eigenvalue is usually denoted by lambda. Remember that if we multiply matrix A by vector V, we will get this new vector. This new vector can be written like this, where 2 is the eigenvalue, and this is our original vector V. Thus, if we multiply matrix A by the eigenvector, we'll get a new vector. This new vector is the same vector V multiplied with some scaling factor, which is our eigenvalue. We can therefore conclude that an eigenvector of matrix A results in a new vector that has the same direction as the original vector but which might be either longer or shorter than the original vector. This scaling factor is the corresponding eigenvalue. Note that the eigenvalue can even be negative, which means that the direction of the new vector is reversed but still on the same line. For example, in this case the eigenvalue is equal to negative 1 because the new vector has the same length as the original vector but points in the reverse direction. Note that we can find many eigenvectors for matrix A. For example, this vector is also an eigenvector of matrix A. Because if we multiply matrix A by vector V, we get a new vector with the same direction that is twice as long as the original vector. Note that although we have found a new eigenvector, the corresponding eigenvalue does not change. We see that the eigenvalue is still 2. Also, the new vector can of course also be considered as an eigenvector of matrix A. All vectors with the same direction are actually eigenvectors of matrix A. Most software tools therefore report normalized eigenvectors to unit length, which means that its length should be equal to 1. We will here see how we can normalize the following vector so that it has a length of 1. The current vector has a length that is equal to the square root of 5. Let's square both sides. If you divide both sides by 5, the right hand side will be equal to 1. We can reformulate to this, where we see that if we let a vector go from the origin to the point with an x-coordinate of 2 over the square root of 5, which is about 0.89, and a y-coordinate of 1 over the square root of 5, which is about 0 0.45. The resulting vector has then a length of 1. Thus, the following eigenvector is an eigenvector with unit length. If we use the software to find an eigenvector of the following matrix, the software would report the following eigenvector which has a length of 1. Note that for a 2x2 two two matrix there will be two eigenvectors and two eigenvalues and for a 3x3 three three matrix there will be three eigenvectors and three eigenvalues and so forth. We have previously seen that this is an eigenvector of matrix A with a corresponding eigenvalue. The following vector, which has a different direction to the first vector, 
is also an eigenvector of matrix A. If you multiply matrix A by this second vector, we get a new vector, which can be represented in a plot like this. This new vector is equal to the original vector times negative 1. Negative 1 is therefore the corresponding eigenvalue. In conclusion, for the 2x2 two two matrix A, there exist two eigenvectors and two eigenvalues. Note that for a symmetric matrix like this one, we'll have two eigenvectors. Two eigenvectors of a symmetric matrix will be orthogonal, which means that the angle between these two vectors would be 90 degrees. We can check if two vectors are orthogonal because the scalar product should then be equal to zero. We see that if we multiply V1 and V2, where V1 is a row vector, the scalar product is equal to zero. This was the end of this basic lecture about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. In the next lecture we will have a look at how we can calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a simple 2x2 matrix.